This episode may contain explicit language. Welcome to Karen Feeding, the show where we parent together. I'm Zach Rosen. I make another podcast. It's called The Best Advice Show. And I'm dad to Noah, who's six, and Ami, who's three. We live in Detroit, Michigan. I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. I write the family travel blog, Dutch Dutch Goose. I'm the mom of three littles, Henry, who's 11, Oliver, who's nine, and Teddy, who's seven. We live in Tokyo, Japan. Hey, I'm Lucy Lopez. I host the Mamacita Riga podcast. I'm the mother to Amelia, who's 13, Avery, who's 11, and we live in Miami. Today on the show, we're talking about grades. A member of our Slate Parenting Facebook group is looking for advice on what's good, what's bad, and what the consequences should be. And as report card and progress report season enters full swing, there's no better time to talk about this. Later on, we're also going to recommend some things we're loving right now and think you might too. And then if you're in the Slate Plus Club, we're diving into the spectrum of toddler book tolerability. Here's what you'll hear if you have Slate Plus. Yeah, they enjoyed it. But for me, I was just like, I, 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 what are we doing here? I, we got <laughs> to go to bed. Here? It was like a dinner and a movie. Which Dr. Seuss book? Are you talking about um, like Cat in the Hat? Um, or One Fish, Two Fish? Cat in the Hat? Green Eggs and Ham is also quite long. Yeah. It's just like, yes, Green Eggs and Ham, that one. It's oh pretty damn God, long. Oh my God, que largo. Oh my God, eso era. Y dale, y dale, y dale. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no more. No Those more. though, I felt like, so any book that I could memorize, so the kid held the book and I'm like walking around the room cleaning up and I'm like, <laughs> you know, parenting. I'm like, I will not eat them in a plane. I will not eat them in the rain. Lights off. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not Sam like them. I Sam, am. I am. Shut the door. <laughs> Exit. <laughs> If you're not listening on Slate Plus, we hope you'll consider it. There's no better way to support the show. And when you're a member, you'll also get ad-free listening on all Slate podcasts. Sounds great, right? We think so, too. Go to slate.com slash care plus for more info. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll see you back here in a minute for our listener question. Is your closet chaotic, crammed with a bunch of clothes but nothing to wear? You need a game changer. Upgrade to high quality affordable pieces from Quince. You'll have a wardrobe of luxury essentials that transition from one occasion to the next and you'll stay on budget. There is an organic comfort stretch chore jacket that I wear constantly. I'm wearing it honestly like a couple times a week because first of all, in like sub 50 degree weather, I can wear it as a coat. I can also pretend that it's like a nice sport coat. I don't like to wear sport coats, but I'll wear this quince chore jacket with a nice shirt under and some slacks if I'm going to like a nicer thing. I can dress it down just by wearing like a ripped t-shirt underneath. It's such a great piece. It's got big pockets for my car keys and snacks and Kleenex and my like huge clean canteen water bottle fits in the pocket. It's a great piece. I love it so much. Quince offers a range of high quality items at prices within reach, like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters from 50 bucks, washable silk tops and dresses, organic cotton sweaters, and even 14 karat gold jewelry. And that chore jacket I bought is only 60 bucks. It's such a good deal. The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. Indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash karenfeeding for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash karenfeeding to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash karenfeeding. We're back and diving into today's question. This came from Kelly, a member of the Slate Parenting Facebook page. If you're not in that group already, we'd love for you to join us. There's always something new to talk about and always some incredibly wise advice. Just search for Slate Parenting on Facebook. You'll have to answer a few brief questions just to prove that you're a human being and come hang out. It's easy and it's fun, so we hope to see you there. All right, here's what Kelly asked in the group. Curious what other people think. What do you consider a bad grade? Assuming a child is capable of what they're being asked to do, what grade do you consider unacceptably low? Is it different depending on the age of the child? Do you enforce consequences for bad grades? Also, how are report card grades expressed at your child's school? I'm not asking because of any issue with my kids. I've just recently been judged harshly for considering below 90 an unacceptable report card grade. Deep breaths. I'm taking I'm taking deep breaths here, guys. Okay. I <laughs> try to remain calm. <laughs> try to remain calm. 
grades are bullshit. All there of it them. Is. They're they're I come with that hot take, Liz. I I mean, no one's gonna be surprised. Listen, like I homeschooled because I think all of this is made up. It is all made up. It is made up to rack and stack children that cannot be racked and stacked. And so I uh, questions like this, I mean, I'm frustrated because on one hand, this has nothing to do with our wonderful listener who who posted this, by the way. I am frustrated because it is part of the system and I get that. And I really struggle because I understand that once you step outside of the system, it's it's hard and I, I mean, I fundamentally feel that when we decided to homeschool and maybe even before that, when we went to school in the Netherlands and and now we're here, that we like came out of the system and looking back in, I'm like, what are we doing? But also uh, there's this real pull and this this is me too, to feel like if I don't participate, what are my kids missing? Um, And I think that as I get older in this, I realize maybe they're not missing anything. There are plenty of homeschoolers that go on and do very well in college that have never gotten grades. I think about all my my sweet neurodivergent kids, all of the children out there who are neurodivergent who just cannot meet the expectations to get a, a grade. So for example, you can be great in math, but if you're constantly reversing your fives, and you can never, you know, the teacher is marking that off because the standard is, you know, good handwriting, numbers not reversed, but my kid can do advanced math. He's just never going to write his five the right way. He's never getting that 90. Like that is not an achievable goal for this kid, even though math may be, you know, where he needs to go. And I think once you see see this, it's really hard to feel like, Getting mad about a grade or deciding what a good grade is is a good idea. Um, and that rewarding this is is something that we should be doing because I think it produces people who are chasing after this perfection that doesn't get you anywhere. Like, great, you performed the way that this one person or this school district or this whatever. I'm really mad. I'm really mad, yeah, guys. Yeah, go, go. Um, said right. that you are supposed to perform and then we're going to assign that to who you are and what privileges you have and i just look and think like so here maybe you have this kid that is that is a amazing social person but they're a they're a, a student that is consistently getting you know c's maybe even d's because they can't stay organized and turn in their things mm-hmm. and instead of saying you know what, this is a, this school stuff is a struggle for you, but gosh, are you a good friend? And you know what, you're going to be an amazing therapist because you're always listening. How do we get you to get that goal? Which, what support can we give you? We say, you don't get to go out because you can't get your act together. I mean, how many adults do we know in our lives that are not organized, but are good at what they do? I don't know about you, but my, you know, I have a handful of, of professionals in my life that I think their their life, like those some of those skills are off, but they are great at what they do and we're able to focus there. So I just really, um, I have a lot to say too about, I want to talk about what our kids are doing, but I first just, like I needed to give my temperature reading on grades and I would love to hear what you guys think. But I mean, I just think this is bullshit and it is something I actively pursue and looking for schools and stuff for my kids that is not happening. Like I am like, where can I put them that they are not going to receive a letter grade that tells them who they are as a person? Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I was someone who didn't thrive in school. I always got like fine grades, like B's and stuff, but I was in a place where, um, all my friends were getting A's and I, kind of learned and am still unlearning um, how to not be ashamed of what I, you know, and so I had to unlearn this, this kind of shame piece because I always felt inferior because all of my friends, you know, were doing so well in the, in the one, in the thing that was like, you know, uh, deemed the most important thing. So um, I, I, I totally agree with you there. I think there's also a piece to it though, of like, I don't know what, 
is going on, Kelly, with your kid in particular. But there's also a bunch of different reasons for why someone might be getting a sub in your case, and you know, ninety percent grade. First of all, if I if I came home with eighty nine percent all the time, I would have been thrilled because like there's the there's like you don't care. There's the kid who doesn't care. There's the kid yeah. who's working really hard and like really wants to do well, but just like the concepts aren't clicking. There's the kid who happens to have an asshole teacher who's out to get them. Like there's all sorts of variables that need to be considered too and that transcend, um, you know, whatever the the, the 90% is um, in your case. Because 90 is incredibly, incredibly, like Liz was saying, um, it's subjective. It's so subjective and, and it's no way to measure everyone against the same, the same standard. So Kelly, got a lot of love for you. Uh, and I came from a, a, a very, my background is pretty different. My parents are immigrants and um, they were sold the, if you do really well in school, you're gonna accept it to an amazing college mm-hmm. um, and grades and grades and you have to get good grades. And you know, it, it worked for some of the, the kids in my, in my family, you know, and on my block. Um, I was one of those kids that graduated high school when I was 16. So it wasn't that, but it wasn't because I was getting straight A's either. It was more so the work ethic behind getting the grade. In my home, we're more about, well, how hard did you try? I mean, did you have a quiz on Friday and decided Thursday at six o'clock in the afternoon to study for that test on Friday? Well, Chances are you're probably not going to get more than higher than whatever a C is in, in you know in your classroom, or you're not going to get the grade you really want. Um, I'm all about trying. I'm all about like, did you put in the effort? Did you think on that? Did you have a plan of action? Did you use your time management skills? Those are things that are really valued in the real world. Not if you got an A or a B in uh in that science class and i sometimes feel that for young girls specifically uh we've got so much stacked against them that sometimes even like not getting a b or an a in math or 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 in science like just i i see what it does to my kids and that's why at home we're very very careful on how much pressure we put on those grades Um, I saw what it did to me. I don't want it to happen to my kids. Uh, And I rather reward my child for studying her butt off all week Mm -hmm. for a quiz on Friday and her coming home really proud, holding up that paper that says, I got a, I got a 75. And I'm like, what? That's awesome. But I learned all this stuff that I didn't know two days ago. Like I, I was having trouble and I, I know I'm learning how to study. Well, Lucy, how do report cards go? So, <laughs> not like what grades they get, but like what what does it look like when they they're bring, like are your kids getting ABCs? Do they get percentages? Are they Yeah, no, my kids get A's and B's or they're great like, you know, an A or a B, whatever. They do get A's and B's, but right now Avery who's 11, she got a, a C in reading, has an A in language arts, but has a C in reading. <laughs> Why do you have a C in reading? Oh, because I didn't do all the I readies. What's I ready? I think that's bullshit. Right. It's a program. It's, it's like a, a computer online. program. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a computer program where they have to read a story. They have to sit through it. They have to listen to the story, read the story, dissect the story. And busy work. It's busy work. It's it, exactly. Gracia. It's busy work. So what happens? Que cuando she comes home from school, she sits down and she's looking at me and she's like, I don't want to sit and do this shit for half an hour. She doesn't want to. She wants to go outside and play. Right. And if, if Run she off. Has, like, <laughs> she, she, and, and I'm all like, go, go ride your bike. Go do what you got to do. But just know you got that spelling test on Friday. All right. So she has an A in language arts and a C in reading because she didn't do all the busy work that comes with that reading class. I got a problem with that. I also got problems with the fact that here in Florida, they, for three months, put these kids under this immense pressure to pass the FAST test, which is like the FCAT. I don't know if you guys know anything about that. Do you know you can opt out, though? 
No, I didn't know that. You can opt out of it. They can't force you to test your kid. I opted out the year we were in uh, public school. I opted the kids out of everything. They stayed home with me in the morning. And you just write a letter. They can't force the, them to be. It is terrible. The stress. Yeah, it my was kid awful. Get, so my now, kids stayed home and read books. Mm. So not only are they stressed about passing these tests, which, by the way, determine what grade level they're at what class they're going to take next year in middle school but she's freaking about freaking out about that freaking out about i ready and freaking out about passing a a subject yeah so in this house we reward work ethic we reward trying we reward reward um what cool thing did you do today for somebody else yeah um those are the things that I, if I if I could have my own report card on, they would have straight A's on, you know. Um, but to me, grades are bullshit. Um, and I live in, in the state, <laughs> I live in Florida where, you know, my opinion on this is not very popular, you know. And it's I, I mean, I don't think this is a very popular opinion. And how much of that is because what we grew up with, you know. Yeah. But- and we were taught that it's like the grades are going to make or break who you are and what you do. I mean, when we yeah. were looking for schools here, we actively sought out schools that don't do kind of traditional grades. So um, longtime listeners will know the year that I had Henry in public school in Colorado, he was at school in the woods. I just didn't open his like to this day, I've never opened his report card. Um, in fact, we sat down for wow. teacher conferences and the teacher was like, okay, um, have you looked at his report card? And I said, no, and I don't plan to. I have a bunch of questions about how he's doing in the classroom. Um, because I knew that for me, that grade, I want to call it like my own grade anxiety, that I might not be able to overcome it. So that me as a parent, once I looked at it, I would start to either be like, oh, my kid is an A student. Or like, why isn't he an A student, right? Like I see all this potential. Mm -hmm. So I just decided that it was something that I as the parent (laughs) couldn't handle uh, and I wouldn't be able to like overcome it. So I just never looked at it. I don't know that Jeff ever looked at it. It it comes electronically. I just literally never opened it. (laughs) I also was never one of these parents who was going to sit down and do homework with them. And I got criticized by family, friends. Everybody was like, what do you mean you don't sit down with them and do homework? I'm like, I'm not going to do it. And guess what? My kids are pulling A's and B's. One of them is on in all advanced classes. I cannot tell you what any of her books look like, what any of her homework looks like. Because I wanted to be that parent who is like, you come to me when you really need help. Because... I want to see what you know. I think I'm like very invested in what they're learning. And I do when there's homework that comes home, I'm very invested in helping them get it done because I want to see where they are and what they're learning. And so I think in that way, we're at a school where there isn't very much homework, which is nice. Um, There was a lot for Henry kind of at the beginning. Beginning, I think because he wasn't sure how to manage his time and now he hardly has any, which I think is not because I, I think he's figured out how to do that in school and that way. Um, the IB system does it a little different in that they have this like one through seven and there's a for every assignment, there's like a rubric and you're getting assigned, you're getting graded on these different rubric things. So like in any given project, you can't get like a seven or an eight. You get like a one of them is like, you know, did you meet like our community standards, which is basically like, did you follow the directions? You know, did you um, how much work are you putting in? Did you put the appropriate amount of work into this? Uh, then we're looking at like, how did you do on your the actual act of writing your grammar? your this. So they're getting this broken down into these different like numbers where it's like, you know, one is like below whatever, but it's broken up. And I do like that in that it's giving where they need to continue to to work on things. Um, because even as adults, like I tell Henry, who, who I think has this like internal drive, and I've talked in the past, like I've definitely added to the fact that he feels like he needs to really perform and I'm trying to do better at not putting that pressure on him. 
but I tell him all the time, like, when we write pieces or we put things out there, an editor is is looking at it, making changes, right. and they're not like, man, you don't use, you know, the comma. You didn't use a comma 15 times where you mm. needed it. Fired. They just make right. the changes. Right. And, I'm, and I'm like, okay, you know. So I think holding kids to a standard that is above, like, like why? Why are we telling them you should be perfect? I think the other issue is that like this idea that every kid is part, that you have an A student is crazy to me. Like you have an A in everything across the board. And I, I've said this before. We are a family of like, you need to be proficient in many things, but you don't have to excel in everything. Mm-hmm. So if your kid is like excellent at piano and, you know, bad at reading, you have to be able to read enough to do the work of the the piano work, the music work. But get a get a piano tutor. Like like we can push on that. Zach, I know your kids are young, but like, are there? Have you thought about how? Because you're you're not that far from first report cards or first. Yeah, no, I just got or, a report card. And so, like, how do you? How are you handling that? Because there is like this pride too. Like when they do well, they mm-hmm. are like excited to show you that they've like you know someone else has a, have said that i'm great at this like, yeah and noah's so little that you probably look at her report card and you're like that report card is actually about us babe <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true yeah i mean her it wasn't it wasn't letter grades it was just like uh i don't know if it was satisfactory um then one above that like thriving and then one like needs some work but she was all like satisfactory where she's supposed to be and then like excelling and like counting to 120 which is what her math class is like how they're assessing math right now if, if she can count to 120 um i i am not going to be too worried about it um i am not putting pressure on her shira isn't either shira comes from a house of like where her parents i wouldn't say were, they were demanding but they were expecting her to excel and she did um but no i'm 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 going to be committed to them working hard and like learning about what they're interested in and just not, you know, I mean, just, just making it to the next grade is going to be like, that's a priority, but like, you know, demanding that my kids get straight A's is not something that I could even pretend to, um, you know, try, try to do. I think practically though. Okay. So this person is asking like a practical question. It can be very difficult when, or at least I find it difficult, when you have friends that are excited that their kids get straight A's, right? Or you have multiple kids and one kid does academically do very well. Um, I don't know. So like in, in like, what is a bad grade? Like if your friend came up and said, what is a bad grade, right? If they're my close friend, they're obviously not going to ask me this because they know I think the whole thing is bullshit and made up unless they want to commiserate about that. But like, I guess, Lucy, how are you dealing with these conversations? And Zach, do you see yourself dealing with them where you have people that are like, you know, talking about grades, comparing kids based on grades, and then you want to be so outside the system? Right. Again, I don't want to sound like a dick, but here goes. So, (laughs) um, and I shouldn't even say that, but yes, I've had these conversations with other mothers and it's usually the mom who has this kid who's like a crazy overachiever and they're like, well, so-and-so is in gifted and in all advanced classes and, um, you know, is also the captain of the baseball team and just, you know, you know, saved a puppy from a burning train. And I'm just looking at, them and they're looking at me and I, I don't want to go down the road route the road of like well my kid has straight A's instead I'll say something which Gino like he gets a kick out of it instead I'll say my child is a wizard mm-hmm. on Final Cut Pro <laughs> I mean she is yeah yeah I, you should see this kid edit a film she's the next Scorsese um or I'll say something uh, Because I don't want to feed into that conversation. I'm not the right person to have that conversation with. Um, Because I did, again, bringing up COVID, I did really find out who my kids were during that time. And I know that sounds terrible, but I I, I really did. I found out Amelia 
is really into science and wants to be a lawyer and my youngest is really into the arts and um knows how to edit audio like this audio right now she can edit it and and those are wow. skills that she learned when she was eight years old but uh to sit and do busy work for reading class she can't do you know she'll sit on her chair and spin around totally. tell me seven stories about the day and i that's why i think the grading system is pretty messed up because and I've, I would have these conversations all the time with teachers. I'd be like, hey, you know, how, how, oh, she's a great student. She's so sweet. She's so this, she's so that. I'm like, is she getting any work done? Because I just don't know. Yeah. I don't know. They're like, oh yeah, she's getting work done. And I'm just like, hey, Avery, what's the capital of Florida? She's like, Miami? I'm like, yeah, right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you start wondering, like, okay, what are you really learning in class right now? But like, because you have an A in this and you have a B in this, but what are you guys really learning? It's it's a lot. I want to say too, really quick. Sometimes when we have these conversations, I know we have a lot of lovely teacher listeners who feel like we're like they're like, what about the teachers? I'm like, yes, we hear you. I I really see this more as like a systematic issue, and I understand that there are there are so many like. My ability to step outside of the system is not everyone's ability. And and I think this is an area in which, like, our schools just have to do better. And I understand that, like, school funding is so tied to this rack and stack in so many places. And, right. and that when I talk about opting out of, you know, the tests, that that is something yeah. like some of the funding is tied to this. And if you are opting out, but also I, I just don't think there's going to be a change Unless people are saying, I don't want this done to my child. And to know that you don't have to participate in some of these rack and stacks and like you don't have to open the report card. You don't have to have conversations with teachers about the grades. Now, there is also, I think, this like fundamental problem that doors shut with some grades. Like if your child is not turning in any work or doing something and you are sitting in that C, D, you know, even F range, there are real life consequences that I wish weren't there, but they they are there. I also want to say that I think when we have these conversations about like, what is a grade? And like, I think anything, you know, below a 90 and people feel this way, there is a whole section of the population whose children are never going to get, Zach, like you said, never going to get a 90. A 90 would have been great. And so we really have to be careful when we're having those because uh, as a a parent of a neurodivergent child, like that is just not something that's going to happen for Mm -hmm. like Oliver is not going to be a straight A student. He is not like we are just excited um, when we get teachers and and people that see him for who he is and the advances that he's making. And there's I mean, and he's uh, compared to children with much more severe learning disabilities, things like that. I feel like we're not even facing a fraction of what so many other people face in these conversations often feel almost like embarrassing to have to say like look man we are just excited that he gets to school with all his stuff like this is a Mm -hmm. that when he comes home he's like excited about something he learned and i fundamentally feel like he's going to be a great member of society this is just not his golden age while we're in this while we're in school like that's just not something he does well meanwhile i have henry who like this may be his golden age. <laughs> like school is, he's really good at school. He's been really good at school since he was a, a, a bait. That is nothing. I'm not doing anything. I don't just like, his brain works the way that school wants your brain to work. Um, and, and I think sometimes we assign value as opposed to saying like, some of these kids are just good at school, like are just good at school. And that's great. And there are so many ways you can apply that. Um, but your brain not being good at school does not mean that you will you will not succeed in life. I think we should leave it facts. there. Facts. Yeah. Facts on facts. Listeners, we want to hear what you think. What advice do you have for Kelly? Send it to Karen Feeding Pod at slate.com or leave a voicemail 646-357-9318 or go find the post in the Slate Parenting Facebook group. However you do it, be sure to reach out with feedback and questions. You never know, we might share it on the show. We're going to take one more break and see you back here for recommendations. (laughs) 
Let's move on to recommendations. Elizabeth, what have you got this week? Okay. You guys know, I think I've recommended Radio Lab so many times, but I want everyone to go listen to the Radio Lab episode called Zoozve, Z O O Z V E. There's actually two of them. You want to listen to the long one first, and then there's an update. It is like back to the best of Radio Lab. This is, I want you to listen with your family. I listened, um, this like comes up regularly in my podcast feed on the train. Yeah. I listened to it. I like could not wait to share it with the kids. I turned it on when we were driving somewhere and the kids literally were like, couldn't stand the, the noises the cars were making because they were so into it. Um, this is like Latif Nasser is the host of this episode and you're going to want to be his friend and just love him. It is about a mistake that he, that he basically finds and it turning into like the real naming of a, of a object in space. It is incredible. And at the end of it, there is an opportunity to, um, for everyone to kind of participate in naming objects in space. So I want everyone to go listen, listen with your kids, especially if you have space loving kids. It was like riveting and and it's lovely and it's something the whole family probably knows nothing about unless you've heard the episode Zuzve. Uh, so go give it, give it, give it a listen. You're the second person to recommend this episode to me in three days. So um, it's in my queue already and I'm, I'm excited to hear it. I hear, I, 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 remember, I saw some stuff on the internet about what happened, but it's, it's pretty great. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, Lucy, what are you recommending? Yeah, so I'm going to recommend a book called What the Bread Says. It's uh, Baking with Love, History, and Papan. Mm. It's written by Vanessa Garcia, who's a Cuban-American author. And the book is in Spanglish, which is really fun if you're just trying to learn to speak Spanish. Or if you yourself are of, you know, Hispanic heritage, Mm -hmm. you know, this is a book that really pulls on your heartstrings about your relationship with your abuelo. Um, and it's about a globe trotting bread baking adventure from Spain to France and then to Cuba and then back again. And it's based on a true story. And it's about how Vanessa herself, while um, dancing and sing- singing, learned about her past and how it helped her shape her present and future, all because she learned how to bake bread with her grandfather, Pavan. So it's a really great book and I highly recommend it for like little kids. But my daughter, who's 11, even though it's like a considered like a little kid book, she loves this book. The The pictures are beautiful. It's amazing. I think you could get it like on Amazon for like 12 bucks. Yeah, that's my recommendation. What the Bread Says by Vanessa Garcia. Awesome. Never too old for a picture book. It's so good. It's so cute. And the fact that it's based on her life. And I don't know, I have a it warms my heart because, um, you know, being Cuban American, you don't really see a lot of children's books in Spanish, especially by a Cuban American author. And that meant a lot to me. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to share this. So and listen, if you're can I add that if if you feel like this book is too old for your kids, Go request that your library get a copy so that it's a, it's available. I always think when I hear book recommendations, I'm like, oh, we kind of aged out of that. Um, I always try to go make sure there's a copy in the library so that I feel like sharing it with other children. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. So that's my reco. Nice. Zach, what are you recommending? I'm recommending a different children's book. I'm recommending the, the classic Shel Silverstein, A Light in the Attic. But I am recommending that you go and find... Shel Silverstein performing it himself, which I think we must have had this when I was a kid on cassette because I just went and listened to it the other day on um, Apple Music with the kids and it all sounded very familiar. Shel Silverstein is one of my favorites and this book and album came out in the 80s so it, the production is dated but it's so good. He There's no one better at reading his own poetry um, than Shel Silverstein. It's it's going to take you back to your own childhood. You're going to introduce your kids and this whole new generation to one of the the geniuses of of children's literature. I think, um, and I, his his other books are also um, available as audiobooks or um, as albums on on Apple Music or Spotify. Shel Silverstein, one, Shel Silverstein, uh, one of the goats. This is one of my favorites, and I had not a clue to search for it as an audio like book and out read by 
Like this is we're playing this in the car today. So good. Then, yeah. Where the sidewalk we're ends is also available. It for our morning drive. It's so cool. Yeah, I can't it's recommend that. It's going to change enough. my life. I can already tell. This is the kind of stuff that I, I like I had no How do I not know about this? Okay. I don't even know how so, I came across it. Um but I'm glad I did. I'm glad you did too. Oh, I'm I'm sure Zach will wake up to a text from me that's like, "My Bring life it. has changed." <laughs> <laughs> I always text Zach about his recommendations. I'm like, "I did this right away." <laughs> and I'm going to do the same with Zeus Way. And what the bread says. And we always want to hear what you're loving, listening to, reading. Please let us know. Seriously, be sure to reach out and keep the conversation going. And that's our show. Please subscribe, leave a rating and review, and tell your friends. This episode of Karen Feeding is produced by Maura Curry, with special thanks to Rosemary Belson. Shasha Leonard is the voice of our listeners. Alicia Montgomery is the VP of Slate Audio. For Elizabeth Newcamp and Lucy Lopez, I'm Zach Rosen. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.